when you open Stencil Works up, this is the kind of the view that you'll get. There's a lot more games than you'll be seeing. A lot of these are mine that have you know, happened to upload onto the computer. Um, but what you're going to want to do is create yourself a new game. So literally just click on this. Uh, and then you've got all of these. Um, these, I think I've, I've nosied through in the past and they're all right. But if you're just wanting to start something from scratch, go down to blank game here. And you can just click on that and click next. Uh, your next point, you know, is, is going to be to create your uh, basic information. So for this, you know, it'll, it'll be, um, I'm going to call it uh, space, space game. Yep. Uh, for what I've made, I think I might make the width and height of the, the, the scene a little bit different. Uh, that will probably have an effect on the camera as well in the game, so that's something you'll need to consider. Uh, I'm going to make it s square. Actually, no, uh, I'm going to make it kind of phone size, I think. So 320 by 240. Oh, uh, other way around. 240 by 320. Okay. So and then I'm going to click Create. Give that a second. So, let me just kind of give you a rough idea of how Stencil Works works uh, in summary. Uh, I like to think of Stencil Stencil's interface kind of like a theater, and with some engines a, a similar setup as well, in that you have your scene, which you know, uh, which everything happens within, and then within that scene you have your actors that behave in a certain way, and certain events occur to them, and with that, that's how your game plays out. And the script that you write is the plot, essentially, of, of how things kind of flow in the game. But before we get to any of the script or code aspect of things, what I'm just going to cover first in this tutorial is is getting your stuff in your game. Uh, so yeah, let, let me just point you to the, the visuals that I've got for this project. Uh, I'll have a link to you know what I've used. Uh, which is just like a spaceship and some some little enemies that I've created, um, which I'll have in a zip. So the first thing that I'm going to do is you've got all of these different uh, options here. Actors are kind of like the bread and butter of all of the different kind of characters and projectiles and all sorts of stuff uh, that's going to be created in your game. Uh, your backgrounds are um, we'll cover in just a sec. Um, so let's go into actor types. Uh, you're going to click here to create an, your first actor type, and that's going to be spaceship or player or whatever you want to call it that makes it easiest for you. Um, so our spaceship is made up of several animations. So I'm going to create my first animation for my uh, spaceship. So click to add my animation, and now you can see up here I've got this little animation zero uh, indicator here. As I create more, it'll list, you know, animation three, four, five, six, and you can go and you, you can change the names of them, and you know, however you like. But what I've got to do first is I've got to create my actual, you know, bring in my actor itself. So I'm going to click to add a frame, and it's going to bring up this little pop-up, and then I'm going to click choose image. Now, before I do this, I'm just going to backtrack just for a second. Uh, depending on what you're doing for your game, but just I find makes things more complicated is yours will probably have scale set to four times four and smoothing set to bicubic or bilinear. I always leave, or I, I by default set it to no smoothing and set the scale to one. If you set it to four, it'll make all of your characters tiny because it's, yeah, it, it's, I think it's for. Like things like uh, phones and tablets, it, it kind of crams in the the um, the scale of the uh, assets themselves. But keeping it to one usually does a good job. Uh, so then I can press, and once you've done that, it'll always stay that way. And then I'm going to press choose image. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where are we? Uh, spaceship assets. 
So I'm going to grab the player. This is this little spaceship here. So you can see in the format it's been brought in, it's not going to be very useful to us because it's two sections of the spaceship, but they're both the same same image. So we have to kind of chop it up into its frames of animation. Uh, so this is would be two. So if we come up to here, uh, you can change the columns and the rows to kind of match the number of frames you've got. You see when I enter two, this splits this image down the middle into the two frames. Um, and then the other thing we want to do is we want to set the masking color. Uh, if you remember in the last tutorial I did, uh, we talked about uh, um, kind of the green screen effect that you you have for transparency. That you need to have everything as a, with a consistent color for the background. So then when you click on that color, it will um, use it to say that everything that's this color should be invisible. So I'm going to click on this. You know, I could click on any part of the ship if I wanted, but I'm going to click on the white. That's the, the, the transparent color I've chosen. If you set the, the transparency in Photoshop, it actually just does it automatically for you. So then click Add. So now you can kind of maybe see in the corner, there's this nice little kind of like flickery animation. But that's not how I'm going to want it in the final game. I want it to flare and then have that sep this animation here as a separate image for when you're not flying around. But we'll get to that eventually. So what I'll do very quickly is I'll split this animation into two separate frames. So if I come down to here, you can see that there's a little duplicate animation button. If I click on this, it'll create a, a second copy of this. Um, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to name it one idle, which will be its default animation, and then I'm going to name the other one move or forward. That'll probably do the job. Okay. Um, and what I'll do for that is I'm going to get rid of that second uh, second animation. And on this one, get rid of the first animation. So I can either click remove frame or I can just press delete and then confirm that. So then I've got those two frames of animation now, separate. Uh, another thing that I'll probably want to do when preparing this is go to collision. Now the collision is essentially the box of your character. It's like um, and the thing that surrounds your character. Uh, so if I zoom into this guy, uh, what I can do is I can change the numbers in here to match the scale of your character. I like to kind of think of it almost like, well, oh, actually, that's not worked. Um, kind of almost like the hamster ball around the hamster to stop it from getting squashed if it, you know, is or stepped on or something in the household. I don't know. I'm just just trying to think of an example, but that's that's usually the way I explain it to other people. Um, so I, usually with a, a you know a shoot 'em up or, or you know a space shooter or something like this, you want your collision box to be a little bit smaller than your character because if you if someone thinks they've been hit when they it looks like they haven't, they find it unfair. Um, so save that. You can also go in um, and you can create things like polygons. So if you want it to literally match the wings, bang on, uh, you know you can go in and you can set that up or circles for the spherical object that we'll have for the enemy so the other cool thing with it is, is that you can actually change the act the collision group that this actor will bump into so for example you could have something like uh, um, you, oh, you could have the, the ship be like a, t a very small physical collision box in the middle but have like a sensor around the outside. Um, the difference between a sensor and a like a non-sensor is that um, is almost like those spy films that you'd have where you have lasers that cutting across a you know uh, a, a secure a secure room. Uh, you don't feel if you pass through a laser, but the it senses when you come into contact with it. That's that's essentially what a sensor does. Uh, so I'm just going to very quickly tweak this. So it's 40816. 40816. Cool. 
So that's done. Um, so let's just very quickly bring in our other actors. So once again, enemies, enemy, add the animation, click to add the frame, choose the image. You see that from having set it last time it keeps these the same as they were before. Split the columns to two and set the masking color to white. And then just click on add. Now one thing to point out is it by default sets it to white, but I think, if I, if I remember correctly, it hasn't actually selected it. It's just the default kind of thing it chooses. As, as you know, So you have to actually pr manually press on the, the, the white in your image to, to set that as the transparent color. Um, so yeah, I've got these these uh, this ship now, so I'm just going to nip into collision. I'm going to use the, the circle collision tool to add circle. So with this, what you do is you just adjust the radius. So I've I, for the, the circle I've gone for, I'll just do that again so you can see. That's going quite quick. So I'm going to add that circle again. So I want that to match more or less the size of my enemy. So I think it's maybe six radius. Yep. And then just move that into position. I think. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay, so that's set up now. So then the only other two things I need to bring in, uh, with the exception of the background, are the bullets and the particles. These are a little bit easier to set up because they're kind of similar size and they don't need their collision changing. So I'll bring these in. Choose the frame, choose the image. Bullet. Then click Add. Collision's good. So I'll very quickly do the particle. And unless you're planning to change the animation, you you don't necessarily need to name your um, your actors. Uh, sorry, name the animations anything. They can remain default as long as you're not changing them in the code, which we'll go into in a little bit. So yeah, they're all set up now. Uh, the next thing we're going to bring in is going to be a background. So if we click on here, uh, and just click create myself a new background. So this will be a space. Um, and the way that the backgrounds work is that you essentially import your frames of, you know, you, you jump straight to adding your animations. Um, so, you know, for example, if you're wanting to have like, like three or four frames of, um, I don't know, lightning, for example. So you might have a very long delay of no lightning and then have like a flash for like two or three uh, frames, something like that. Um, and it'll loop between those. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, click to add frame, choose image. Now, what I'm going to take, you know, kind of take advantage of explaining to you here, is there's one kind of slightly uh, irritating bug in stencil uh, stencil works, which um, I mean, I, I, I should probably get in touch with the developers about because um, it's been a consistent problem for quite a while. Um, it's just a, a little thing, and it, as long as you know how to fix it, it's not a problem. Um, but if you Oh, actually, on Mac, it's don't think it's a problem. Okay, um, I think they may have fixed it actually. Excellent. Okay, they have actually fixed this, um, but it's just something to be aware of, just in case on you're using an older build or. Um, but in the past, if you happen to click, if you happen to click on. outside of this area, what would happen is you would, this would end up behind stencil works, this pop-up, and you would end up n not being able to click on your actual, um, you know, it, it kind of freeze stencil works up, uh, and that would, that would be a problem. So um, the way to get around it is just to click off stencil works and then click back onto it, and that usually fixes it. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just going to add the background now. It's great to see that they've actually fixed that now, which is brilliant. So that's, that has been a problem for some time. So with this, you can choose to set the transparency or you, you can leave it as it was. Uh, so then click Add. So at this point, what you can do is you can set uh, a vertical scroll speed. So for example, if you want the stars to kind of loop around or vertical scroll speed, you know, the same. Um, and then you've also got the kind of the repeating of your background. So if you've got like a very uh, smallish kind of background, but you want to spread it across a wider area, you can repeat the background uh, to cover the whole space. Um, which I usually do just to make sure that it kind of doesn't have any chance for the background to st stop. Uh, what's the word? Um, you know, to have any gaps in the backgrounds. So that's that should be done now. So the next thing that we're going to be covering is uh, fonts. I'll just find the uh, font very quickly because I don't think I have it in the source folder. But I'm going to be using Code is Crux. I just find that's like a nice kind of font to use. Um, so code is crux. Uh, there we go. And you can, I think you can just grab this online. I'll probably include it in the source files just just to make it easier for you. Um, I'm gonna adjust the size and all that stuff, the style and uh, smoothing. I usually leave that off, um, although it can cause some problems with certain fonts. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to set that to white because my background's black, so it wouldn't show up otherwise. So now if I save this, and then go to dashboard, oh, let's have a look, close all, there we go. So those are all kind of the main um, elements and actors and objects within the game that we're going to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to end the video here for now and then I'm going to go into uh, bringing them into the scene and preparing the scene.